I thank you guys for watching. Totally not sponsored by Hago Romochalk. See ya. <laughs>
Now, x. On this interval, all the x values that we are going to take from 0 to 1 are going to be strictly positive. What's the nice thing about the absolute value? Absolute value of x is nothing but x if and only if x is strictly positive. Meaning this integral is actually equal to our integral from 0 to 1 of absolute value of x integrated with respect to x. But that's absolutely dope because absolute value of x is definitely an even function. Okay, if you take a look at the graph of absolute value of x, it's going to look like this right here. Meaning since we are dealing with an even graph right here, with an even function, we can actually turn this into 1 half times the integral from negative 1 to 1 into a symmetric integral, absolute value of x integrated with respect to x. And this is what we are going to do now. That's a really nice integration technique and it's not used too often, but it's pretty dope. Okay, meaning this thing right here is actually equal to just the absolute value of this thing. Also absolute value of e to this chunk, but the exponential function is defined positive. Okay, meaning we can turn this into being over whole r by going over this integral, so it's 1 half times the integral over omega times 1 half of the integral over tau, meaning 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter. You see this and that is going to cancel out and now we are going to have a double integral over whole r. Also absolute value of omega to the 2x minus 1, tau to the 2y minus 1, e to the negative omega squared plus tau squared integrated with omega, integrated with respect to tau. I hope this did make perfect sense to you guys. I think using a little example right here is actually an, an appropriate thing to do. Now, how can we continue from this point? Well, the cool thing is we can now introduce polar coordinates. I mean, what you can also do is introduce polar coordinates right here on this interval, but then you have to use it um, one quarter. Okay, this is just one quarter of this whole thing. So um, just take a look at the graph for example. So we went with this right here and now we are going to actually continue. Now I would like to introduce polar coordinates, meaning what we are going to do is we are going to set up the equations of a circle. So let omega squared plus tau squared be equal to um, in this case r squared. Okay, This right here is nothing but the equation of a circle. I was just thinking about the coordinate that we are going to use. Meaning overall that omega is nothing but for example the cosine of phi times r and tau is nothing but the sine of phi times r. And now we can introduce um, our Jacobian determinant so that's pretty easy to do. We are just working in two dimensions. So easy piece of lemon squeezy. I made a video on polar coordinates. Now differentiate just the single parts right here. Our Jacobian determinant is going to be nothing but r in this case. Okay. It's really not hard to find out. Just take a look at the Wikipedia page, uh, page what the Jacobian determinant is and how to do a change of variable. I made several videos on change of variable already or double integrals in general. Now we can actually plug the stuff into here. We are going to end up with, okay, our interval is going to change. We are going to integrate over a whole circle in this case in, instead of whole, over whole r. Meaning we are going to have an interval from 0 to 2 pi, whole circle, okay, going around the whole angle once, the whole circle. Then 0 to infinity we are going to extend our radius right here. Now absolute value of omega is nothing but the cosine times r. So we are going to get r to the 2x minus 1 to power and then the cosine of phi to the 2x minus 1 to power. Same should be with tau just with a sine plugged into here. So r to the 2y minus 1 to power sine to the 2y minus 1 to power of phi e to the negative r squared r dr d phi. Okay, we are integrating over r at first. And now we already came pretty far. Now it's time to Fubini this shit once again because, well, a lot of stuff right here is independent of r and 
the other half is just independent of phi, meaning we can just integrate with respect to phi at first and then with respect to r, for example, okay? Also, I want you guys to notice the fact that our epsilon value is multiplicative, so epsilon value of a times b is nothing but epsilon value of a times the epsilon value of b, meaning we can distribute this stuff into here. And r is strictly positive on this interval. Our radius, it's a line segment, it's strictly positive, it's supposed to be. Meaning epsilon value of r to the something is nothing but r to the something. Leaving us with, I'm going to put a lot of stuff around this right here, those are just side notes. And take it out from 0 to 2 pi of absolute value, then we are going to have the cosine of 2x minus 1 of phi, I tell you, sorry, and then the, the sine of 2y minus 1 of phi integrated with respect to phi times an integral from 0 to infinity of, like I said, absolute value stuff, okay? And also we can bring those r's together, so they have the same base. Now let's bring the exponent to, exponents together, r to the 2x my, uh, plus 2y minus 2 power e to the negative r squared dr. Um, and also we have times r right here. Don't forget that. Okay, um, yeah, times r. Now, one last thing to do is to actually argue with this thing right here. Okay, there's a bit of stuff we have to talk about on this part and also we can deal with this right here using the gamma function. Okay, now I would like to introduce a simple substitution right here. Let r squared be equal to something, okay? Let r squared be equal to, um, give me some nice variable for example, I don't know, eta, okay? Meaning 2 times r, dr is nothing but d eta. Meaning r dr is nothing but our d eta, uh, one half d eta, d eta over two, mod uh, multiplying both sides by one half is not equal to zero. I have to think a lot about this right here. Okay, you see, I'm a bit slow today. And what we are going to end up with is nothing but an integral from zero to infinity. We are going to get, okay, you see we have r to the 2x plus 2y minus 2, we have a common factor of 2, okay? So we can factor out the 2 right here. But if you multiply the exponents, it's the same as having, we have r squared to the x plus y minus 1 power. But r squared is nothing but eta. So we have eta to the x plus y minus 1 power. Then we are going to get e to the negative eta. And then we also have r dr is nothing but d eta over 2, okay? I'm bringing the one half to the outside. And now I want you guys to take a look at something. x plus y, okay, that's some kind of variable. Now we have eta to the something minus 1 times e to the negative eta integrated with respect to eta from 0 to infinity. Well, this thing right here is actually nothing but, including this factor, one half times our boy the gamma function of x plus y, okay? This argument right here is just what we started off with. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, we also have this thing right here and I'm going to give you guys a little hint. Since we have this absolute value right here, we can actually do some nice little manipulations. You can break this up into four integrals. One from zero to pi over two, then from pi over two to pi, from uh, pi to 3 pi over 2 and then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. You can introduce substitutions to get back to 4 times an integral from 0 to pi over 2 in the end. So introducing 3 little substitutions, some kind of x minus for example um, 3 pi over 2 or something and then you are going to be left with 4 times this integral right here over this integral and you are going to find the derivation of this on my second channel, okay? Meaning this thing right here is going to evaluate to nothing but four times the integral from zero to pi over two of the cosine. And since it's always positive on this interval, our cosine and sine, if you take a look at the graphs, we are also going to get rid of the absolute values. 2x minus one of phi, 
sine of 2 my 2y minus 1 of phi d phi. 1 half and a 4 is going to cancel out to a 2. Okay, and this thing right here is actually then nothing but our beta function of x comma y. And you can get to this form by introducing the substitution let whatever we had as a variable, for example t in the other integral representation, be equal to the sine squared. Okay, because then you are actually going to get 2 times cosine times sine d phi as the derivative right here, okay, when, when doing the substitution. It's actually quite easy arriving there. It's not too hard. I actually introduced the substitution in a different video, it's going to come at some point. This right here was just a complementary video. Like I said, take a look at my second channel to find out where this right here came from. And this right here is actually pretty fucking dope. And I'm so angry that, that I didn't um, look into this, um, this topic when doing my integral wars back then because with this you can actually define so much cool stuff okay you can even solve the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of phi using the beta function right here and that's absolutely bloody gucci if you ask me and that is it for now um i thank you guys for watching there was quite a bit of input even for me I had to think a lot about what I did right here. Like I said, take a look into the description. There will be a link to this little part right here. What else can I say? If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend our channel if you like. If you want to support our channel a bit more, buy those teachers I created or support it on Patreon. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. <laughs>